No way. Is it time? It's time. The Hawkeye finale is here. Let's give him hell. What is going on, everyone? It's Sean O'Connell, the managing editor here at Cinema Blend, with the final analysis for the first season of Hawkeye. We are at episode number six. It is called So This Is Christmas, and we got an hour long episode to go through so lots of stuff to talk about naturally we're gonna have to dig into spoilers for not just this episode of hawkeye but the entire season so if you haven't yet caught up on hawkeye and you've landed on this video somehow back out now go watch one of our other really cool videos uh, for the rest of you who have watched hawkeye let's dive right into the episode but before we do that do me a favor go down hit subscribe turn on your notifications keep up to date with all the videos that we're putting here on cinema blend so are you ready i'm ready Let's talk about the big guy, the guy who's been casting his shadow over this entire season without us really knowing it, and that is Wilson Fisk, the kingpin of crime. Vincent D'Onofrio is back playing the uh, oversized crime lord, and we got to see him in full action uh, in this episode. What will we do about it? So we learn that Eleanor's problems, uh, of course, are traced to money, and money that Kate's actual father uh, had owed to the kingpin of crime so she's been working for him covertly to almost pay off the money that uh, their families have owed Wilson and of course you know once you start working for Wilson Fisk it's really hard to get out uh, you you don't necessarily quit her job as if she works for Goldman Sachs so Eleanor is trying her best to get out and even though she says she has a safety net none of that's gonna help uh, and as long as Wilson wants you in his grasp he is going to keep you there but one of the aspects that I thought were really fascinating so we got to see the physicality of Wilson Fisk uh, in multiple battles we saw Kate Bishop taking him on good for Kate that was awesome to see Kate Bishop going one-on-one -on -one with Wilson Fisk and yes yeah, she's getting tossed around uh, that toy store she hits him square in the chest with an arrow and he just kind of brushes it off like you're really starting to annoy me it was pretty amazing and I also did like the callback to her being able to flick that thing uh, and hit the arrowheads and subdue Wilson Fisk in that way but not only did we get to see the uh, the awesome sort of you know physical power that he has even though he's not super powered he's just a, a, a mountain of muscle but I also did think we got to see some sort of sentimentality from Wilson and you know you could always sort of think that he's double-crossing Echo but I do think that his relationship with Maya is something that he holds pretty dear now was he responsible for the death of her father yeah probably yeah what a surprise and once Maya sort of found that out, she had to take her vengeance mission away from Ronan and on to Wilson Fisk, which leaves us to the final shot, uh, a shot literally, uh, a gunshot that goes out and Maya is pointing a gun straight at Wilson Fisk's chest. The camera, of course, pans up and we know that they're not going to bring Vincent D'Onofrio back just to have him killed off by the end of one single episode. But I think I know where that's going to get explored and that will bring us to point number two. That's quite the turnaround. I find it really interesting that one of the shows that Disney and Marvel have announced uh, before Hawkeye even ended was an Echo series. And so you knew that this character was going to be really significant going forward. And I think that her link to Wilson Fisk and his whole criminal organization is what's going to power this announced Echo series uh, as we continue to explore it. Because, like I said, I, I don't think Wilson Fisk is dead. There's no way that they brought D'Onofrio back uh, and they're just going to waste him by, you know, eliminating him off screen, too. So there's absolutely a reason why the camera panned up and Kingpin will survive. Yes. That's reasonable. However, with Echo, uh, if she gets a six-part series, it can also pull in a lot of characters who we've also met this week uh, in Spider-Man No Way Home, and that means Matt Murdock. So we met Matt Murdock uh, in a cameo scene, kind of brief, but at least established him as part of the MCU, where he met Peter Parker and helped him out with his legal problems. Echo is a character in the Marvel's uh, comics who is associated very deeply with Kingpin, uh, has kind of a villain anti-hero type role, has worked on both sides of the line, which very much happens in the Daredevil comics. There's always a lot of gray area in terms of uh, Daredevil and Echo and maybe the types of ways that they would team up to bring down Wilson Fisk. Um, but, but having an Echo series and having Marvel announce the fact that this is coming, I think gives them a playground to not just explore future stories with Kingpin uh, and, and keep going deeper into the hold that he has on New York City. The people need to be reminded that the city belongs to me. 
but that's a great place to bring in Daredevil. That once you start to get into Kingpin, once you start to get into the world that Daredevil operates, you're getting a little more mature, you're getting a little more grown up, and maybe that's the way that these Disney Plus shows can start to go. But immediately, because of the way that Hawkeye ended, I'm way more intrigued about the Echo series than I was at the beginning of this show uh, when we were just learning about her as a character. In the spirit of the holidays, I'm gonna give you a minute to think about what you're starting right now. Well, the biggest mystery that was hanging over Hawkeye got answered in one of the final scenes, and that was who does the Rolex belong to and why was Clint so dedicated uh, in terms of getting it off the black market? So it turns out that it did belong to his wife, Laura, which was an answer that had been speculated by many people. But now we kind of know that she was a member of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and if you paid attention to the watch when it was flipped over, uh, Laura was agent number 19, uh, which if you read the Marvel comics, you would know that that is a reference uh, to a superhero character often linked with Hawkeye named Mockingbird. So it makes sense that Laura probably at some point in her uh, spy career working for uh, working for S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, had the Mockingbird moniker and I don't doubt that she retired that uh, when she went into hiding whether it be witness protection or some type of thing in order to stay with Clint. You made it. I made it. However, you know, this has people who watch the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D television series really worried that that this is yet another move that's sort of showing that that show is not in canon in the MCU. It's been interesting to see how Kevin Feige has allowed the Netflix characters to come on over with D'Onofrio and Charlie Cox, but Adrian Padalecki had played the character of Mockingbird, well, well at least Agent 19, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, I kind of think that the term Mockingbird is almost like 007. Like, I think a lot of people can have it, and it almost gets passed from one person to the next. And so all that Hawkeye really does confirm is that at one point, Laura Barton was Agent 19, and now she's in some type of retirement. Uh, I think that that makes sense. I think that that's a really good way for them to explain that she has had a, a deeper past, which can be explored in other stories, and if you, they want to bring Clint Barton back uh, for some reason, this is a great way to do it. However, I'm going to get to a point later on where I think that that might not be the case, and this is just a uh, nod for Marvel fans to understand that, like, yeah, the, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. has had other agents, and they've been involved in certain missions along the way, and Laura Barton is absolutely one of them. I want to take better care of your stuff. This final episode, uh, outside of the things that I've been mentioning, didn't have a ton of analysis, because it didn't have a lot of great reveals, but what it did have was action aplenty, and the Hawkeye series has completely delivered on making the archer, you know, who's sometimes the butt of the joke, as a guy who just goes into battle, you know, with a, a stick and a string, as has been said multiple times, including in this episode. Uh, but it really goes to show how badass Hawkeye can be when he's in the middle of battle, especially when he has all those trick arrows. The Rockefeller tree and the ice skating rink was a fantastic set piece. Like, putting the two Hawkeyes against all of the tracksuit mafia was a really great, like, you know, movie-worthy action set piece. And this is on top of uh, episode three, which I went back and rewatched right before this because of that amazing car chase, uh, the fight in the warehouse even before that, which showed off uh, the, ma the amount of skill that Hawkeye and Kate Bishop both have. Nice shot! Yeah, no shit! And this was just a really exciting way for them to conclude. They had so many subplots that were sort of going on that led to multiple fights. You had Yelena versus Clint and them being able to come to sort of some sort of emotional closure. You had Kate Bishop taking on Kingpin. You had the two Hawkeyes on the ice uh, taking out the entire tracksuit mafia with all of those incredibly creative uh, new arrows that they had. And yes, of course, I think just to get under my skin, you had the LARPers uh, who were in costume and fighting off uh, tracksuit mafia as they tried to clear the party. Now, listen, I'm not I'm not coming around on the LARPers. I still think the LARPers are a semi-ridiculous addition to the series. That's okay. If you want to use them as a laugh, that's fine. Didn't work for me. I would rather see more of the action, like we were seeing, uh, more of the archer type of action. Uh, focus on that. But listen, I'm not going to fault Hawkeye too much for the LARPers. They just didn't necessarily work for me. We're essentially Avengers. When you compare it to the other series so far, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was really heavy, heavy into action and a little bit lighter on story. WandaVision and Loki have been a great mix of mythology, uh, but also creating some big ripple waves that are going to go through the MCU, especially WandaVision. I think when we get to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, you're going to see uh, the ramifications of some of the decisions that Wanda made. Hawkeye, you know, set up a great corner of the MCU in terms of establishing Kingpin uh, and giving Echo a, a new purpose. 
but you know this was more of an action heavy series and i really appreciated it for that reason because i'm going to be paying attention to the directors of hawkeye to see where they go in the mcu moving forward i think it would be really smart for kevin feige to in some way hold on to the three directors who worked their way through the hawkeye series you have uh the burt burt and birdie the combination uh the duo who worked on some of those middle episodes and then reese thomas who returned from directing the first two episodes to come back and direct that finale which was really action-packed and had some really stylish choreography especially with yelena on the side of the building and kate bishop having to jump out of that um that window and find her way down terrific action really stylized action i would love to see these people continue in the mcu whether in a feature film or in another uh, series i'm not sure who's directing the echo series yet but if one of these people ended up getting that assignment i would not complain not many people walk away from something like that i'm so proud of you which brings us to our final point in analyzing the finale of Hawkeye, which I believe is going to be closure for Clint Barton. I would not be surprised uh, if this is the last appearance by Jeremy Renner in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So should I say a few words or? Now, you know, he, he could show up as a cameo in future Kate Bishop stories, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, he popped every once in a while in a little bit of a mentor role. But I think this is the end of Clint Barton. I think was I think this was the the handing of the baton over to the new Hawkeye, which is why when she's sort of trading off names and and trying to come up with a, an alternate, and then he goes, you know what? Actually, I have an idea. This is it's Kate Bishop's time. Like this is her time to sort of grow into uh, the next stage of heroes in the MCU. You're seeing a lot of uh, you know bringing closure to the arcs of the original characters almost every major avenger at this point now has been sort of ushered off into a a pasture uh, in some way shape or form like i think that's okay i think renner had a great run if this was the episode that's being used to set up the next version of hawkeye which you know kate bishop can go on to become a member of a new version of the avengers teams that all makes sense to me like that's where the mcu should be going we're establishing new heroes like the eternals and shang chi and then it's time to meet new heroes fantastic four are going to become um a franchise that marvel is going to uh, exploit going forward blade is going to be a new character who gets introduced by the end of eternals we found out that kit harrington was going to be playing the black knight so there's plenty of new characters to uh, dive into and i think kate bishop is, is going to fit into that fabric uh, and be part of this uh, growing and evolving and completely shape-shifting mcu moving forward repeat after me i'm not going to do anything incredibly stupid now I want to hear from you guys. Tell me what you thought about not just the Hawkeye finale, but the series in general, and also kind of where you think Disney Plus is going in terms of these shows. Do you like these sort of six episode uh, arcs, you know, that introduce a bunch of new characters throughout them, but also maybe bring some closure to the existing characters? I know Mark Ruffalo is going to be part of She-Hulk, um, and I believe that they're going to bring Tim Roth's Abomination into that too. So there's plenty of seeds that can be spread throughout the, the Disney Plus series. And I, for one, think that it's great the way that they're doing it. Um, but, you know, we're going to have to see how that experiment continues going forward that's another reason why you're going to want to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications because you know we're going to be covering all of those shows as they come out and i want to make sure that you guys be able to come uh, watch those videos with me because i love the fact that you guys have been joining me on this journey in the meantime have a very happy holiday have a great new year and thank you again for watching hawkeye with me